Okay, so we have a gastroschisis on the board. PEDS and NICU are aware. And now let's go over the care plan for infant with gastroschisis and ruptured emphalocele. Okay. okay, so we, Lindsay, can you turn on the radiant warmer to pre-warm the bed? Mm -hmm. And Alita, can you check the airway supplies in the sure. suction? And Lindsay, can you also connect the cardiorespiratory leads to the cable? Yeah. And we have to prepare a ster sterile plastic bag, which we have right here. We also need an eight French gastric tube, which is right there and it's available. We have our normal saline boluses and D10W prepared. Uh, and then we have IV supplies ready as well. Okay, perfect. Okay. And I have the ventilator turned on and ready to go as well, just in case. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yes, sir. Hello. Hi. Uh, are we preparing for the gastroschisis today? Mm -hmm. no? Yes. Okay. So I already informed the neonatologist. He should okay. be on his way. Okay. And I believe he talked to the pediatric surgeon. Okay. 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 Sounds good. So we have our bowel bag here. Yes, yeah, sir. And we also have the normal saline boluses set up as well. Hi, I'm Michael, the neonatologist. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, maybe we should start with some introductions. Yeah, I'm Lindsay. I'm the recess nurse. I'm Monica, another recess nurse. Yeah, I'm a respiratory therapist. I'm Yasso. Yeah, so okay, okay, so I have the history here. We have an 18-year-old G1P0 at 37 weeks. She's Hep B, HIV negative, rubella immune, GBS negative. She received treatment for chlamydia about two months ago. Follow-up testing was negative. She had alcohol use early in pregnancy, prior to discovery of the pregnancy. There was occasional marijuana use. She has had regular antenatal care. Fetal assessments estimate the baby's weight at 35th percentile with good biophysical profile. The 18-week ultrasound discovered gastroschisis. You can see the bowel but no liver, and there's no matting. Labor started last night, and she ruptured about eight hours ago. Okay, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can discuss the plan now. Um, so, Lindsay, I'd like to come with you and talk to the obstetrician when we go to the delivery suite. Um, it would be very helpful in this type of delivery to have delayed cord clamping. Right. Okay, uh, that will really help later on with the intravascular volume. So I certainly come over and talk to them about that. Okay, okay. so. Um, once we bring the baby though over here, it would be preferable to put the baby on their right side, okay, and we'll have to check the bowel about every five minutes just to make sure that the bowel looks healthy, okay, as we're waiting for our surgeon to arrive. Um, part of um, doing the best that we can for this child is going to be ensuring the bowel is decompressed. So I'd like to see that a number eight French NG um, is placed or an OG is placed um, down into the stomach and we aspirate out the contents of the stomach and then put the um, OG to intermittent section, okay? okay? And that'll help to keep it as small as possible. And then I mentioned before the importance of fluids. So if the baby has not received delayed cord clamping for some reason, after we establish a peripheral IV, I'd like to give 20 milliliters per kilogram of normal saline, okay? And that'll help um, establish better intravascular um, volume. Um, and then following that, we would use fluids at 120 milliliters per kilogram per day uh, using D5 half normal saline. And that should really provide a, a lot of the care that we need to. Okay. What about the plan for the breathing support? Uh, I know we should not use CPAP for these babies. You know what, thank you for reminding me of that. That's actually a very important point. The, um, use of CPAP would cause the bowel to get distended as we're trying to suck out, you know, the contents mm -hmm. and the gas. So, I'm, yes, thank you for bringing that up. That will actually be very important. So, um, although I don't anticipate this child should have any breathing difficulties, if they do, um, we shouldn't use CPAP. We should intubate. Okay? Okay. okay. Sounds like a plan. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Any questions at all? No. No? no? Okay. 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 Hi, so we did have the delayed cord clamping. Okay. Here's our baby with gastroschisis. Okay. And Yasser, are you okay taking okay the head? Now. Okay, and I'll be the event coordinator. Sure. Okay, okay, great. Let's try to position the baby, please. Okay. And I'm going to put on Price the sat monitor. Okay, okay, as soon as we get a vital sign, I'll let you know. Here's your okay. eight French OG. Okay. And the bowel looks uh, nice and pink at the moment. Looks pink. Looks pink and healthy. Support the bowel. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Okay. 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 Oh, saturations are great. Okay, 35 oh. mLs of air. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. 
And we'll try to put some gold oh, yeah. in the sure. bowl. So and another 15. Oh. Okay. That's because the that intermittent section to attach. Yes. Here's your IV supplies. Okay, I'll get that started. Okay. Oh, thank you for yes. doing that. And Doctor, the intermittent section is on. Okay, oh. sounds good. And Dr. Wiseman should be along soon. Okay. okay. Good. So okay. the vital signs are stable. The bowl is clean and healthy. Oh, hi, Dr. Hi. Wiseman. Hi, guys. How are you? Hi. Here's hi. your uh, patient. I think I know all you folks. This is baby Jones, is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, is it a boy or a girl? A, it's a boy. boy. Okay. What, what is the baby's weight? Do you have any idea? Uh, we're estimating about three kilograms. Oh, okay. Because we heard about this baby antenatally. We actually, I was at the fetal assessment. And as I recall, there wasn't much. I'm going to have a look at the baby in a minute. I'm just going to get some gloves. Okay. As I recall, there wasn't much in the way of high-risk features that uh, we were made aware of. The bowel itself antenatally looked pretty reasonable. There was no debris in the uh, amniotic cavity. OG tube in, and that's pretty good. Is there anything coming out of it? Yeah, we got. Oh, that's good. And you got an IV running. That's also a good thing. And I like the position you have the baby in, just slightly tilted, which is offloading a little bit because, as you see, the bowel is dependent, and of course, it's bound to be dependent. And the issue is the status of the of the uh, mesentery as it comes out of the abdomen and crosses over the defect. And if we'll just have a chance to look at the uh, bowel, we're looking through the bag because the bag is in good position. We don't want to disturb the content of the bag by contaminating it. So we'll just see the bowel. We can feel it through the bag quite nicely. And there's no stomach out, which is a good thing. You've obviously got a nasogastric tube down, but even then, sometimes the stomach will come out. The defect size is relatively small. You see, there's the cord, and there's a, a small gap between the cord and the bowel. So... Basically, I could say that there's no way that the reduction of this bowel would ever even be attempted without extending the defect. And we would extend it kephalad, either for reduction or for placement of a silo. And you know, we've got the three size silos. We've got a four, a five, and a six. And just from the size of the baby and the look of the uh, defect, it would probably be the five, which is the most common that we would use. So I can tell you that in an effort to reduce it and or put a silo in place, we would have to extend the defect, and that's why we use a Kelly forceps, just to allow ourselves to extend about two or two and a half centimeters. And if we can do that, we can then determine whether there's going to be a possibility of reducing it. Uh, to do that, though, we'll need the baby to be uh, relaxed, and that'll mean that we'll probably want to give the baby a little bit of muscle relaxant then. And then, if we're able to reduce it, that's fine. If we're unable to, then we have the silo to place. And then the final thing that we're going to need will be some appropriate dressing, which will either be cling or curlex, which will wrap around to protect the silo. Mm -hmm. And then the baby will be safe to be transported. But I think we can get that all done right here because um, we've got everything that we need. Based on that, uh, Monica, if you could get the rapid sequence induction drugs ready, sure. and we'll give those through our IV that we've established, and then we'll use a three and a half endotracheal tube. Okay, and yes, are you okay to place that? I am. You are okay. All right, thank you, Dr. Wiseman. Okay, thank you. Thank you.